Hello everybody! I'm Raphael Perry and this here is a nice little game I came across called Dead in Vinland. Now, judging from the art here, I'm gonna make an assumption that it might be somewhat related to the Vinlanda saga, which I haven't read for about ooh, 20 years now. Actually, no, I haven't read it at all. I've read Njal's saga and I've read the Laxer of Adela saga and that's about it. Now, I am aware that this game is apparently like another game by the same creators called Dead in Bermuda, which I'd never even heard of and didn't know existed until I actually came across this game. I had a quick look at it and it seems to be something to do with a bunch of survivors who crashed on an airplane in Bermuda trying to survive, right? So I'm thinking what we are going to have here is elements of settlement management, resource management, looking after a group of characters. And it seems these Viking folk have been exiled from their homeland for some reason, which in turn means they were probably up to no good, because even if they were set up, there's a chance tempers are going to fray, and there may be one or two people who are not entirely suited to trying to keep a small community going in hard times. I'm imagining lots of choices of consequences. The art style is not quite what I'd normally go for, but I do like the theme, and I'd definitely like to see how it goes. Now I've had a quick look at the controls, and I'm not seeing any keyboard controls here which I'm going to presume means it's pretty much all mouse driven. And I did see the dreaded click to continue on the opening screen there. Oh wait, hang on, does this arrow mean anything? No. Uh, Master Volume, don't even know if it's going to be a voice. But you know what, I'd like to record it anyway and show it off. Now looking at this, I can see the artwork is a little anachronistic, but not by much. And I know there's the obvious one, there's a woman here with a weapon and a shield. Hey, sometimes it happened, not very often, and usually in extreme situations of emergency, defending the homestead and so on. And in this case, we have a very small group of people. I'm not sure entirely how small it is, this could actually be all of them. Um, wait, there's only one man, and one, two, three, four women, one of whom may be a ghost, or dead, maybe she's a, a witch. I have actually been tempted to show off some Expeditions Viking on the channel as well, however, I played it, you know, for a significant handful of hours, and the language was just so anachronistic, there were just Things like, yeah, kid. It's like, no, 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 Just, no, way too modern, you know. Uh, apart from that, it was a reasonably good game. So in this case, what have we here? Right, we have, we appear to have upper ear piercings, which are a rather more modern trend. Well, no, I mean, suppose ancient India, yes, Scandinavia, not so much even though they did feature briefly in that god-awful fake Anglo-Saxon series on the TV recently, which is just so badly researched. Yeah, the hero has a two-handed sword, really, in a time when swords were always paired with a shield to protect your sword arm because you didn't have enough armor. Okay, so let's see. What do we got here? Tattoos were known in this period, although that's fairly extensive tattooing. Not sure what this blue stuff is. This woman here might have a moustache, and I say woman because of this contour here, which is probably not just the sleeve coming down from her shoulder. Seems to have a bow as well. This woman has a Christian cross here on this brooch. 
although it could also be a more Celtic cross. Also, that's featured on these double cloak pins here. Now, speaking of cloak pins, their main purpose is to actually hold the cloak in place, rather than to sort of just be placed separately below it. So, setting all that aside, this is going to be interesting. I'm going to dive right in. I don't know if I can save manually or how the game saves or if it automatically saves, but I'm going to just give it a try, have some fun, hopefully play all the way through it over a number of episodes and put it up here for all you guys to look at. Okay, now fair play for the actors just in case there is any voice acting. Here we go. Also she seems to have a moustache. Just, just saying. Um, are these supposed to be a bit like Easter Island heads? Hmm. Do I need to name it? I mean, there's no control, so I don't even know if I'm going to use the keyboard at all. We'll see. I do have to name it. Hmm. Bacanas, Algis, Lagus, Gebo. Nordies. Hmm. Ha. Choose your challenge. Nice vacation. Vacation? You mean like a holiday? Is there a... No, there's not. There's no... Survival. The way the game is intended to be played. Sure, absolutely. For extreme conditions. Uh, less experience. States. There are states, traits, dehydration each night, and chance to catch disease, items, and camp stations condition. Right. <laughs> True Vikings don't need no checkpoints. They live from day to day knowing perfectly well that they only have the current save. Why do you put Latin there? It should be True Vikings do not need no checkpoints. They live from day to day knowing perfectly well that they only have the current save. Um, tutorial... Hmm... Is there an option here? I think I want some kind of save system just so I can record episodes because I don't know how long this game's going to be. And hopefully it'll be long enough to enjoy quite considerably. Uh, quick start... Hell no! I want to find out what I'm doing. <laughs> and in we go. I like the little loading logo down at the bottom right there. I've always had simple needs. A roof. A family. A peaceful life. But, like the skulls sing, you can't always get what you want. And what the gods gave me was fire and steel. Kill the bastard! They screamed. <laughs> Luckily, we were warned in time. I can't forget the tears of my beloved Bloodywed when they burned down our house. It's Bloodyeth! It's a Welsh name! I yelled, drop these bags and row if you want to live. Tattoos on the wrong arm. We barely escaped on a stolen boat with no map and no destination. Great big skull in the sky. To follow us. No turning back. We were exiled. This is how our miserable journey began. We drifted for days. Depressed. Hungry. Lost. We thought we had reached the end of the world. When the gods sent us the most terrible storm, our fate was decided. Death. Oblivion. Then, we saw it. Coming out of nowhere. Salvation. Loki's dirty tricks. How very Henry Treese. The gods are playing with us. But I 
Let us know that we must survive. So Henry Treats wrote a very good Viking trilogy of books many years ago, and actually a very good biography, a fictionalized biography, of Harold Hadrada, the last Viking. Okay, loading a fa for reasons they cannot fathom. So a family exiled from home for reasons they cannot fathom. Go on, give me the next line. A longboat lost in a storm. An island from map unknown. Wind, waves, and thunder. The boat torn asunder. Is this supposed to be blank verse? Four bodies washed ashore. Eric, Bladayef, Kari, Moira, where are you? So, <laughs> the, the English accent during the beginning was interesting. Uh, I think if they make good use of appropriate regional accents to reinforce the psychological and personality traits of the characters, that would be interesting, but I suspect there won't be much more voice acting from this point, or at least it'll be like sub-vocalizations, you know, chuckles, laughs, the occasional <laughs> things like that. So yeah, uh, Bladayev is from Roman Benogion, actually. She is the woman made of flowers who is transformed into an owl after betraying her husband. So let's see who else. In that case, we're looking at just four people here that were on the ship. We're fine, honey. We're fine. Oh dear, are we in the anachronistic dialogue land again? We might be. <laughs> Very well. We're fine, honey. We're fine. I just come all the way over from Norway to this strange land and suddenly I developed an entirely new accent. Yeah, I should probably stop doing that. It might offend a few viewers. Odin be praised. Oh, God, she's ginger as well. <laughs> the old father hasn't completely abandoned us, it seems. I wouldn't have bet on it considering the last turn of events. Kari. Are you alright, my child? No, she's really moody. Yeah, sorry, mom? I'm sorry, that's not even a word in English. Yeah, mom, I'm great. Our home burned, Njord's last storm in our asses, and dad's perfect landing on the sharp rocks of the unknown island. A perfect day. Actually, dad is a bit of a... Elizabethan English, really. Yeah, it's a bit later. We are definitely in anachronistic language land, and we're also in everyone has far too many freckles land. Interesting. Okay, she's a teenager, she's moping. Um, she doesn't want comfort. She wants to sulk and feel moody. So is more of a grandmother or sister-in-law or what I hope to find out but for now yeah I think Eric should tell her look come on we're in a bad situation you can't be stroppy we need to work together here especially as your fake moustache isn't visible mind your tongue girl sarcasm and swearing won't make your life long and happy particularly now sorry father And now she's getting depressed. Oh, wow. She could commit suicide if she gets too depressed. Interesting. Yeah, that's cute and all. But what do you do now? Do you have any idea where we are, Eric? She does look a little bit older. It's, it's in the cheeks there and a few minor creases. Then again, he looks a bit older as well. No. We drifted far from the west over many days to the end of the world as we know it. I still haven't worked out what her voice should be. Never heard of an island that far to the west. I don't think any Norsemen ever went here. You can't 
save three dots. So, when reading, I don't know if they teach this in school anymore, but when reading, uh, punctuation mark is an opportunity to draw breath, and a full stop is supposed to be one second long. Three full stops is three seconds. It's a three second pause. Four full stops, four seconds. Two, two seconds, and so on. Three full stops should not be treated as a one second pause. And often people cut it short. We should explore the vicinity and see if we can find someone that can help us. She seems fairly practical. He seems more kind of grim. The daughter's stroppy. Haven't worked out the other woman's angle yet. I hope that someone doesn't turn out to be a frost giant, or worse. So I'm sensing kind of mocking and, and a bit of mischief here, but I'm not entirely certain. Bacana's there on the top of her staff. I'm sensing she might be a witch. We'll see. The family, still disoriented by the shipwreck, started to look around. They decided to walk away from the sad remains of their ship and to explore the woods. And in keeping with this being a northern story, I'm getting really congested in my nose actually and full of mucus. So, sorry, you yeah, have been warned. The forest was as silent as themselves. Shouldn't it be the forest was as silent as they themselves? The atmosphere was getting tense when... Look! Over there! A track! Kari rushed to take the path and the others followed her. They continued like this for almost an hour when they finally found the end of the path outside the forest. Hey, there was a lot of little icons there. They all went away. A wooden shack just here! Yeah, that means someone lives there. Or at least lived there once. So, this may just be something Henry Treese made up, like back in the 50s or 60s, but it is, it is possible that there was some element of truth to this, with the Norwegians being fair-haired, the Swedes being red hair of hair, and the Danes being dark-haired, and then they all kind of mixed together, but that they were recognisable by their hair colour. So that would mean a half Danish, half Swedish family, essentially. Doesn't seem to be inhabited, though. Yeah, that could mean it's diseased or something. Careful, love, don't guess, get us all in trouble here. Look for people first. Don't just walk in and take it over and... Yeah. Although, here's the thing. The Vikings were remarkably flexible people. They were very good at adapting to new situations and in fact that's why they kind of assimilated into other cultures so well. It was one of their defining traits. Moving into the place and claiming it as their own, if people come back it's trouble. Might as well look for the people, you know, we're in a bad situation. Take it easy for now until we know more about it. Look around for a while when you find three piles of dusty bones. One of them has a big hole in his skull. Oh, those are human bones. Oh, bloody Skraelings. Skraelings probably got them. Here they are. And we got some bones. And everyone's getting depressed. Hmm, who do you think they were? How did they die? Is the island inhabited? Well, obviously, if someone smashed his head in. Unless... They were dying of starvation and ate each other, and the last one died of starvation. So yeah, who do we... Let, let's see if we get the option to just go for all of them, okay? Who do you think they were? 
Who is speaking and who are they addressing? That's not entirely clear. I suppose I'll find out. Who cares? They're dead now. She's not very nice, is she? Maybe they shipwrecked on this island like us long ago. She's being very stoic or traumatized. And I wonder if there's a way to go to... Oh wow, that is really... Bl you can tell this is made for some kind of tablet or mobile phone interface, I think. Well, we've covered that. How did they die? I wonder if I have to actually do all of these before progressing. Hmm. They did not die in their bed, and they died at the same time, more or less. This one got his skull smashed in by a blunt weapon. There must have been a struggle here. Blood IF just goes... <laughs> Again, she's completely lost for words. So is Blood IF the one asking these questions? I mean, that seems like, would seem a reasonable assumption, especially if she's blatantly pulled to the fore here and highlighted. Is the island inhabited? Well... At one point it obviously was, but now we're not so sure. There were three people living on this island at some time, so we can hope that there are more, but we can't be sure. Oh my god, what's going on with her neck? It's, it's like it's just stretching, then contracting. Ah, <laughs> oh, well, she is some kind of seed that... Are We'll be sure when we have explored all of the island. And the three dots of doom once again. There we go. But there are four options. Sometimes more than three dots are necessary. Or maybe even some stage directions or descriptive writing, you know. What do we do now? Now we try our best to survive. Yes, yeah, so it was her speaking. There's no hope of turning back to our home. Only fire and steel await us here. So we must start a new life here. It may be a land of new possibilities for us as long as we stick together. Hey, they're getting happy. Um, relationships with each other, apparently. I am thankful to Frigg to be able to endure this hardship with my husband, my dear sister, and my daughter. Got it! She's the sister-in-law! I knew it! Whew. Well, at least she's cheering up a little now. Thing is, this is different for depression. Without my family, I wouldn't have the will to fight and live. We're here for you, sister. Always. Yeah, she still seems to have quite a mean streak. But I still hope this cursed land is inhabited. Time will be very long if it's just the four of us. And we'll need husbands if we're to repopulate the island, right, Kari? Something tells me as a moody teen she's not going to like that idea too much yet. Ugh, no way ever. What is this, Kevin and Perry? Ugh, you can't tell me what to do. It's so unfair. You're not my mum! Oh, actually you are, yeah. Ugh, oh, no way, ever! You can stay in bed with your dirty dreams, I'm gonna go explore this island and make my, it mine! She wants to adventure. Listen, everybody. Now is not the time for jokes. We will have plenty to do if we want to survive. Sorry, my throat's getting a bit raw now. We still have enough potable water for a few days if we ration ourselves, but we can't rely on that. Okay, God, potable. Potable means you've boiled it and you know it's not infected, so you can safely put it in a pot and carry it with you. Wouldn't fresh water be a bit more appropriate term? Look, I'm still going to enjoy this, it's just that... You know, my critical side is going at things a little bit. 
I found two big barrels that we can use as containers for our water. Okay. Blue drop water, green drop potable water. Don't forget, don't drink water coming from rivers before boiling it. You'd be sick to death. That is... She may be wise ahead of her time. Oh. This may be heading into steampunk territory here. Uh, for those of you worried, you know, worried, I I'm not talking like, you know, steam-powered mechanical machines here. Steampunk is a literary term used basically to mean a character with technological or scientific knowledge ahead of their time. So, like, uh, cavemen understanding how the thermal uprise from a volcano could be used to power a hot air balloon or something like that, right? So that means we need to build a fire. Quickly. I only have one fire mushroom left. Here, take it. Fire mushroom. Well, that's interesting. We're gonna get a fire mushroom now, aren't we? Yep. Ah, so a dried mushroom. That is... Well, it's better than yak dung, I suppose. An animal dung, yeah. Good. We'll need to build a lot of things if we want to settle here. I'll set up a workshop with a few tools where we can work quietly. So, she's definitely taking on the role of the woman of the household. Whereas her sister might be more verb versed in plant craft, the daughter hunts. Interesting. And the, if the man is the crafter, because he had the mallet and chisel on the opening screen, then she's apparently the warrior. Maybe her blood gets up when she's forced to defend her. Anyway, wasn't she apparently dead? Didn't this whole thing happen because she got murdered in the introduction? Why is she still alive? That's confusing. But we'll need resources. Wood, stone, ropes. We can scavenge wood from our ship for now. We'll still have a bit of food left on it too. We should go fetch it. Yes, but it won't last long. We mustn't rely on that too much. Actually, my throat getting a bit dry is fairly understandable as these characters haven't had anything to drink for a while. <laughs> I looked around and found some things we could use. Check it out! Check it out, man! Okay, that was disturbingly quick. The conversation they had during her absence was... very short. She didn't look for very long. So either she found something quickly, or they just were standing around staring silently into each other's eyes and then one would be like... We also need food. Ropes. Yeah, well, there there might be some ropes on the ship, I suppose. I don't know. So, yeah, they're, they're all kind of demoralised and a bit dejected at the moment. And a little... Hmm. Wood, rope, stone. Funny, we were just mentioning all those. Good job, Karu. I... I can... I, I know what voice he should have. And I can't remember his name. Um, essentially he's like a less Scottish, more English, slightly younger Ian Glenn, but not Ian Glenn. Um, that same sort of richness and depth to the voice. I can't remember his name for the life of me, I'm afraid. I should. Oh! Actually, I might have something I could go look it up on. Uh, might have some old Radio Times cuttings. I can check that later. Good grief, that would be about 20, 30 years ago. Right, okay. We should explore the surroundings some more. We may find food, resources and whatnot. Eh, resources okay. Her facial expression changed, it makes her look crueler. 
I know she's trying to be a bit helpful and not quite right. And beasts and traps. I agree that we should explore, but be careful. We don't know what to expect. Three dots. Are we going to get conversation options here? No. Let's start working on this camp. We have plenty to do. Okay. Hey, they're just taking things away. The game has been saved, at least. Dead in Vinland is a turn-based game, so you can always take your time to think. Each day is divided into three phases, morning and afternoon, during which your characters can perform various tasks on the camp, and the night when they discuss, eat, drink and rest a little before the next day. Okay. Your most critical resources are your fire and your water. Always keep an eye on their level. Oh, there's no fire. Potable water is blue. Okay. Non pot. So that'll be for washing and things like that. So we have drinking water, dirty water, and a fire. Click this button to access the water and fire management. What now? Do, do I have to? Okay, I have to. Water supplies and Thor's hammer Mjolnir is apparently very important to water supplies. Condition good, 77%. Right now the fire is completely off. You can light the fire using five wood and one tinder. Yeah, but once lit you only need to feed it some wood when its intensity decreases. Be careful though, without fire the family won't hold on long and tinder is pretty scarce. We could boil some of the dirty water. I think they want me to do this now before letting me... They want me to click this button. I will click this button. They also can't survive drinking non-potable water, so it needs to be purified into potable water before bo by boiling it. Notice the decrease of fire intensity in the process. These will definitely require some fine-tuned management. Completely understandable. Okay, it went down 9%. Some water is... Can I close this now? Please? I want to find out what all these other buttons do. I... Oh, interesting. Uh, so that's some kind of repair or mending. In which case the hammer would make more sense. There's, this isn't a toggle to cycle through things. So I'll just close this. Now is the tw time to assign some tasks to your characters. There are still some supplies left in your shipwreck. Someone should take care of scavenging it. Probably the daughter and the sister or that. Um, I, I clicked it. But we're now in a different location. All the characters can be assessed from the sidebar. Accessed from the sidebar and just need to be dragged and dropped into an activity slot in the camp. I don't know what these are. For now, drag Moira and drop her onto the search slot. Okay. That looks like a... a swan or an ear of corn... No, it's the ship, isn't it? Okay. Oh, it's here! Well, that's her busy. Search, item, skip, no, ten years... <laughs> Okay. Scavenging, so sleepy zeds, something uh, like an animal harness, a uh, wheel, a bone, uh, a depression. Great, we'll see later how to execute all the assigned tasks once everyone has something to do. Someone should take care of fetching some more water. Okay. You want it to be heard, don't you? Well, Bladiath it shall be. 
Oh, wait. So, you want me to click? Ah, I see. So, I'm moving between screens and then assigning them duties. This is looking for water. Okay, buy the water buckets. Got it. Uh, scavenge 50. Okay, so as for 27 hours. You definitely need to upgrade your camp to be able to de decently live here. The workshop enables the crafting activity and contains many ways to improve your camp and you can build new activity stations and also upgrade existing ones. So, I don't yet know if these have skills. Okay, so it's not inside the building. Workshop... Assign Eric to the craft shop. Now that's... That's the EI from friend, not the EA, EI from I. It's not Eric, it's Eric in this case. Oh, he's like behind it now. Choose a crafting plan. Some stations have additional options available, accessible by clicking on the station. Remember to look for these, especially when a new station has been built. Click on the workshop and choose a crafting plan. Absolutely. Um, okay. Wood is a pretty ba basic resource here, useful to keep the fire blazing and craft some more things. It's probably a good idea to build a lumber camp as soon as possible. Absolutely. Since this is a tutorial, I will do what is suggested. Condition bad, 59%. Okay. The island is covered in a beautiful forest, so finding trees is not a problem. But cutting trees and bringing them back to camp is. Enables wood cutting one activity for one character. So, ten wood's going to go into it, five rope. Uh, do I click on this? No. Complexity one, okay. A higher value indicates a longer crafting duration. Now, I, I presume I'm clicking this button and the fact it hasn't been built yet might be why it's so in such bad condition. I do see upgrades here, and these paths may be exclusive, but for now I must click this button. Please tell me that didn't happen all, automatically completely. Right. Uh, crafting speed, 59%, not camp quality condition. Okay. The workshop is currently damaged, which is indicated by the colour within the hammer icon on the set. Okay, yes, yeah, so the orange here on Mjolnir means that it is damaged. Click here to have a global view of the camp condition and be able to repair the stations. Every station apart from the shipwreck and the expedition camp deteriorates. Uh, say, so it should be deteriorates. Every station apart from shipwreck, the shipwreck and the expedition camp deteriorates a little bit every night, and every time they are being used by some characters. Lower condition means lower efficiency. Make sure to repair them frequently to keep them at maximum output, or at least a workable output. You can build a tavern? There's only four people. Uh, forge can come later. Camp conditions, so what's this? Cooking pot, we have shelter. I wouldn't call 51% bad. We have water supplies, okay. Alright, let's look at the lot here. Because these correspond to these places down here. We have a healing tent, a rest area. We become what we behold. We shape our tools, and thereafter our tools shape us. Oh, it's the same quote at the top of each one. Okay, a bit of a camp itself. We want to get working on that cooking pot soon. Harvesting camp, garden. Okay, so we can start growing some stuff. That's good. And this is a forest. Ooh, they can mine. Really interesting. Right, so I close this. But shouldn't I be repairing this now? No, it's... 
Where are we? There we go. Right, repair. Yes. Who repaired that? And did that take activity time? Because if we're assigning people duties, I don't know. Last but not least, exploration. I do see the five areas down here and only the four people, so that's interesting for starters. That's, that means you can't do everything, you know. Remember the family just arrived on an unknown island. Who knows what they will find? Resources, dangers, maybe even people! Okay. These runestones are of an unusual shape for runestones. They're very regular. Assign Kari to explore slot. No, I want to read what it says on the runestones. Oh, some of these are reversed. They've used Anglo-Saxon runes to make it harder. Okay. Okay, this is a... E, do, zu, is, book. No, you can't read that. Here. Yeah, no. U, I, W. Um. Ag. I'm starting to think they've just strung these together, or that they're less to make pronounceable words and more to do with the more deeper meanings of the runes. However, I'm going to presume this is a kind of crossroads or exploration point. Okay, expedition camp. I don't see an explore slot as yet. Okay, no, it is right here. Okay, yep, she's sulking all right. Finally, all the characters have something to do. You just need to let the time flow and observe the outcome of each activity. So I presume I just click here, right? Okay, she gained wood and rope and flexed up and down a lot. Fabric, raw fish, fish bait, angelica ointment, celandine ointment, And she's feeling bad. Okay, so wood and rope have been used. The camp has been built to a good condition. She's got some dirty water from somewhere. I don't think she produced it from her body. And she found some clean water or drank some clean water. A new area discovered, the beach apparently. And a meadow. What, not a paddock? Looks like Kari just finished exploring a new area of the island. Let's have a look at what's there using the map. And a map we have. I like this map, it's nice and big. Clicking an unexplored area will mark it as a target for upcoming explorations. Right, let's see. We are... Okay, so let's see. Click on the newly discovered area marked for red exclamation mark to open it very well. Huh. I presume these are all now to be accessed through the map. Every area contains exactly one thing you can interact with. Find it and click on it to display all the available actions that's right here, you know. Most of these can only be used a fixed amount of time, uh, for example two, and the red ones indicate that you won't be able to do any other action afterwards. It's not red, that's interesting. Please note that performing these actions won't affect the time of day, so you can do as many as you wish, and you can choose to keep some for later. Very well, well... Here's a coffer that is washed up from the ship. Uh, there seems to be a hole there in the side, uh, by design. So it may not be entirely watertight, like a kind of lattice window maybe? Hmm. 
these handles are probably fixed into the horn and just lift off the lid, which appears to be locked. Let's inspect it. So I don't know who's looking at it. I like the fact we got a hack silver bracelet as our options here. You whistle when you examine the chest. It is almost in perfect state and its craftsmanship is exquisite. The antlers have been polished and circled with gold. Oh look, even if we don't get this open, we should be taking this back to the house. Just to help cheer people up and say, look, we got something good. I mean, they might get moody later and think, oh, what good is that to us? But for now, it's a lucky find. The intricate carving shows great mastery of woodworking. Even the choice of wood is luxurious. Makes you wonder if the inside matches the outside. Oh, it probably does. Well, open carefully, open by force. Of Check surroundings. Yeah, we don't want to get jumped. Who will perform this action? Uh, blatantly Kari, because she has a good exploration skill. And we don't want to get... Wait, can I assign... Mo no, just one person. Okay. Something bugs you. The chest seems to have been abandoned not that long ago. In plain sight. Yes, it looks like a trap. Search for anything unusual. Absolutely. Exploration 60% as opposed to the 40 she had in the skill. Okay, that was a, a big technological noise alert sound thingy. You fear an ambush. You carefully search the surroundings but find no one alive. What you do find though are two dead Norsemen and a dead furry creature you never saw before. From the looks of the scene you believe the one with the trousers down was relieving himself when he was attacked by a large unknown creature. His friend killed the beast but not before suffering a fatal wound to the abdomen. They must have died two days ago at most. That means they won't mind if you take their belongings, will they? Mead! Animal pelts! A stone whetstone. Well, yeah, it would be the Saga Axe. Interesting. While you're away from the chest, someone smashed it open and looted everything valuable inside. What? They damaged that beautiful box. Damn. That should teach you about leaving a valuable treasure unguarded. Seriously? We just lost a lot now? And it wasn't... Ow. Oh. Well, now we know. Better head back to camp. Some items are usable, which means they can be used instantly on any character. Those are very helpful in keeping them up and running, so you should definitely remember to use them. You can access the Use Item menu via the sidebar or by clicking directly on a character. So I could do it from here, or clicking on her. Now... Try using an item on a character who needs it the most, or because you have a personal preference. It's up to you after all. So Angelica, I believe works for flatulence. Okay, okay. Um, Celandine cures poor eyesight, refresh of traveler's feet. Mead, but we'll save it for now, obviously. Um, yeah, save that for an emergency. The Saga Axe. Um, okay, so she had an axe on the load screen at the beginning, but that doesn't mean she has to have this one. She also has an axe on her character art. We could give this to the father. What's this? Okay. Every bit of your earthly belongings. Might be items she's using as opposed to... Wait. Interesting, because that's not the character I opened. Okay, so, aha. Uh -huh. Okay, 30, 27, 38, 47. Okay, that's bad. Um, 
I'll have to bear that in mind. Right. Sickness... 15, eh? Interesting. Right. Save that for emergencies. You know what? Yeah, he can use that. And if I check here, nope. It's um Okay, yeah, let's look at this while I'm here. The health of a character is comprised of five distinct parts. If any of these goes all the way to 100%, the character dies. Okay, so we have Uros for physical, Kenaz for mental, Forisas for concentration, Tear for endurance. What's the fifth one? <laughs> Eric, unwilling hero. <laughs> Each character has different strengths, expressed by their skills. Skills will increase over time when being used. Yep, fair enough. So, strength, agility, constitution, stealth, intelligence, courage, charisma, wisdom. Skills are grouped into four categories, each of which is being negatively affected by different elements of the health of the character. Okay, acquired skills, healing, crafting, cooking, I mean he's good at hunting and working in the forest. Welsh princess, interesting. So she's tough. And she is Welsh, as is her sister. Her daughter's probably got a Welsh accent as well. Interesting. So let's see. Uh, she's good at cooking. Do the skills increase with use or not? I don't know. And scavenging. All right. Traits four. Wait a minute. I get to choose. Okay, potential hero. Interesting. Scroll to current position in the camp. Use an item. Okay. Uh, lasting remorse. Okay. No, right click? No. No, all these exclamation marks. Uh, bad healer. Interesting. Stiff. He's definitely growing older. Okay, skills. Hmm. Eric's only ambition was to live a quiet family life and to enjoy simple pleasures. A good day of work, a fine beer at the fireside to see his beloved daughter grow and blossom every year that passed. These were the only things that mattered. When Hagbard, brother of the old Jarl, sent men to burn his home, screaming death to the bastard, he quickly understood that the gods had another plan for him, and it was not a pleasant one. He managed to escape with some of his family, embarked on a small drakkar, and fled the country. After seven days of eldritch storms, the poor vessel grounded far to the west, on an uncharted island at the end of the world. Eric will do anything to protect his family in this new but hopefully hospitable land, yet the remorse for being the cause of all this suffering that he feels deep inside will last forever. So potential hero... Okay, so the skills do gain experience. Lasting remorse, bad healer and stiff. We have these here. So, physical... No, so it's not... Okay. Fight. 
sword and shield apparently. Uh, fast warrior. Warrior, world damage dealer specialised in melee combat. And it is melee, there's no melee. There's no may in melee. You just get in there and do it. You know. You don't ask permission. And it's not melee or melee, it's a French word, it's melee. Fast. Plus one initiative for every enemy hurt during the turn. So you have health here. Amount of damage sustained before being completely unable to fight. At the end of a fight, every bit of critical health missing, I presume that's a red one, will result in more injury and more chances to get a wound. More chances to receive a wound or gain hmm. action points. Okay. Initiative. Effects resistance. Chances to ignore completely any negative effect applied by a skill. Negative effects. Debuffs coming from a skill using enemy ally self or move coming from it. Okay. We have class skills. A bull charge, so just rush over and barge into someone. War cry. Something like that. A melee strike. Berserk attack. Interesting. And wild swing. Okay, I'm seeing melee row here and. That's making me think we might be in a kind of Disciples series situation here. Like Disciples or Disciples 2, where you just have like your front row and your back row. And your front row can fight, your back row can shoot, but they can't reach to fight normally and stuff like that. And they never actually moved on the grid. It was very interesting. Relationships. Um, 35. He does not like his wife's sister very much, does he? Wow. Okay. Bladayev, face of flowers in Welsh, was born daughter of a small clan's chief whose lands were raided and pillaged by Eric's Jarl when she was a child. She and her sister were taken captives as it was customary at the time and adopted by a noble Norseman. Thanks to her noble charisma, she blended we quite well with Viking society, marrying a good guy named Eric. A good guy, apparently. Not a good man. A good guy. And having a lovely child with him. Having lost her relatives once, she became very protective of the new family she managed to build, taking care of everyone and everything at home. She favours a diplomatic approach and gentle solutions, but threaten her family, and you'll see fire in her eyes and her axe in yours. Right. Healthy body, of course, for flowers. Stay at home, mother. Bad with beast, okay. She prefers plants and people. Blood phobia, interesting. So she cannot stand the sight of blood. In terms of skills, she's hardy and charismatic. Uh, scavenging, cooking. I mean, hopefully all these skills will develop in time. Okay, that's her right arm coming forward. So she's left-handed, maybe. Uh, protector and sturdy. Yeah, those make a lot of sense. Turtle strike. Surely that should be a tortoise. A turtle's more Mediterranean. Impenetrable wall. So a guard and ally, a shield bash, a guard, and a top. So no basic attack at all. Oh, I suppose that'd be it. And relationships will mirror those. Oh, not necessarily, actually. Okay. Okay, yeah. Increasing relationships when they work together. Understood. Moira is the sister of Bladayev. She is the eccentric aunt of the family, always scheming something strange in her quirky mind. The fact that she wasn't already married at the age at her age was a major gossip in their village and nasty rumours started to fly. The most persistent one being that she was a witch and that she ate her baits after a night of pleasure. A night of pleasure, I tell you. None of these were true, fortunately, or overly exaggerated, at least. 
Being a wild and free spirit, she is an adept of extreme solutions to problems, which can lead to more harm than good. But when the situation is really dire, like being stranded in an unknown, unknown land with unknown dangers, or extravagant ideas can make the difference between life and death. Maybe. But at least it will be fun. Boon... Is it? Can't quite read that one. I just hope she doesn't go erecting a niche stang. Because then we'd know we're in real trouble. Okay, cunning. Yeah, possibly too cunning for her own good. Weak body. Stiff. I wonder if stiff can be removed over time with good rest. And hates animals. Wow, we got two people here who are not good with animals. <laughs> okay. What is she good at then? Uh, being sneaky. Intelligence and wisdom. Healing. Harvesting. Okay. Um, let's see. Mystic and healer. She looks really cheery there and very young. Almost the daughter's age, although those look like sharp talons. Uh, prayer to the gods. That almost looks like scratching someone. Ancient curse. Out of reach. I'll have to look at these more fully when I get into a situation where I needed uncanny litany and surprising blow. I don't know how often the violence is going to have to happen, but I seem to recall reading somewhere that violence in this game was not a major thing and it tended to be quick over quickly good grief oh wow she really doesn't like either of these two very much interesting and sulky salt girl Kari is the teenage daughter of Eric and Blodayev quite the opposite of her nurturing mother and quiet father she lives for the thrill really Quick and agile, she knew how to use a bow before she learned to walk. Before she learned to talk, rather. She persistently asks her father to take her with him on hunting trips, as much because she loves hunting as she hates staying at home with her mother, who persistently tries to make her learn to cook, knit, and so on. She doesn't have any girlfriends. She finds them too annoying with all their talk, talk, talk. She prefers spending time with boys in their warriors' training, but sadly, she isn't very popular among them since she can't be since she can beat any guy at nearly any physical activity, and apparently they're all guys again. And they don't like it. She is totally excited by the opportunities offered in this new land and is oblivious to the dangers that lie ahead. So she's a sulky tomboy. Got it. Five traits. Relentless. Well, that's interesting. Can't stay in place. Yep. Gluttonous. Okay. Impulsive, great, and depressed. Three days left. And it will build up. Okay, so we may need to give her one of the stress removing items. So, agility and stealth, courage, interestingly. Uh, I don't think she's brave so much as just naively inconsiderate of the dangers that may be around her. Okay, lots of archery based skills. Shooter. Precise. No white hearts at all. Oh, she's really vulnerable in a fight. Uh, this, thi this here is what the... That, that's just no. That is not right at all. This is like Roman gladiatorial stuff. Y you don't build lopsided armor in this kind of situation. It just doesn't work. It doesn't do you any favours. Let's see. Rain of Arrows. Evasion Stance. She'll probably need that. Sniper Shot. Enemy in any row. You're next! So, marking a target. Yeah, pretty much. And hit and run. Hit N run. Oh dear. Well, I suppose it goes with the the, the slang language we've had so far. And relationships like so far though. Okay, let's close this. Every task in the camp is associated to a skill. When I get to the end of the day, I'll, I'll end the episode, you know, 
in the night section, hopefully, when I get a good time. Um, and a character of a higher skill will yield better results. Obviously. You should now be able to plan the next phase on your own, leaving the characters to their current tasks or swap them around depending on their skills and needs. Item use, use items, repair stations, etc. Once everything seems fine, just click on the next button to end the phase. Well, let's take a look. I'm going to look at that map first. Okay, so these are question marks. I don't know what that 9% is, but it looks important. This is our... here. Right, you are scavenging. Nine uses left. Um, 26. May I see your character sheet? Scavenging is... that's something the wife is better at, isn't it? Yes, it is. Hey, she was supposed to be good at scavenging. What happened? Ah, okay. Got it, got it, got it. This is base, that's current. Uh, understood. Do I want you... No. Okay, so I'll just keep building this. And then that should give us a new activity. Uh, let's keep our exploring in you. here. Nothing. Okay, interesting. I don't believe I have a lot of options at the moment, so you're apparently here now. Okay. And not necessarily very good at that, so the original... don't want to do that too often though. I may swap these, uh, her and her sister back round again in a bit, but for now I'm not going to do that. Okay, so inventory, camp condition, natural resources. Natural resources are not infinite. Some stations rely on these and more they're used for less resources they will yield. Yeah, okay, understood. Like a mine, for example. This is task log, that is... Can I save from here? No, just quit to menu. Okay, well, let's progress to evening. Well, that's a lot of wood. Not so much rope. Got some cloth or canvas there from the sails. Arrows! Yeah, she's gonna need a Big sleep. Okay. He's gained experience and the camp is now built. You finished crafting something. Hooray. Now maybe we'll be able to do something with that in the near future.
Okay, her skill has increased as well. And she's brought us some more water. So we're getting plenty of water. Did you find anything? Yes, you did. The sun is fading. Time for the family to make the final arrangements before the night, during which they will chat, drink some water, eat a bit and sleep. There is nothing set in stone, but a good rule of thumb is to have some food, approximately one potable water per person, and to be sure that the fire intensity is high enough so that it won't die down during their sleep. Just click on the end day button when everything is taken care of. Okay, so... I presume I'm map. We have an area here. I see now. So the question marks haven't even been looked into yet. Uh, can I go right there now? I can. A patch of wheat. Inspect. Wild wheat is growing here. It's vibrant gold colour, promising tasty grains. Well, obviously, we want to harvest some of this stuff. And the person with the best harvesting, harvesting skill would be her. Absolutely. You search for the best looking sprouts to bring them back to camp. You grab a fistful of wheat and carefully cut the wheat at the ground. Once you have enough, you tie the bundles into sheaves. And that can hopefully be ground up to make some flour. Wait, it can be harvested again? I think we can come back here later. Let's see. Yes. Oh, wait, wait, there's the wheat, that... Okay, yeah, we can go there later. Right. So, how do we take care of evening activities? Um... Ah! Well, the young one needs to rest. Can I just send them all in there? And then what happens when I do that? Okay. With four people here. Out of a potential six. Okay, condition is bad. So, there aren't any act evening activities, or are there? do some evening activities before... Let's take it easy and see what happens. Oh no, the dreaded Hollywood air hump. Are they all genuflect in time? Okay. That's enough for today. Come everyone, it's time to grab a bite and try to sleep a little. You can start without me. I want to consolidate this shelter some more. You shouldn't overdo it, Eric. The shadows are already dancing with us. Not really. I can. I must do it. It's my fault if you... Not again, Eric. We already discussed this topic. You don't have to take the blame alone for what is happening to us. Oh, she's in a bad mood of him. He needs to listen to his wife. But 
You heard like me, honey. What? But you heard like me, woman. The men that burned our home were after me. They screamed, kill the bastard! Yeah, they probably meant your daughter, mate. If you haven't realised that by now. I'm the bastard. It's my burden to bear. Alone. They probably considered her an illegitimate member of the community. And therefore the daughter to be illegitimate as well. And he is not taking it well. Why did they call you that? That's a story I'd like to hear. If we weren't close to dying from starvation, of course. We should make traps. The forest must be full of tiny meat on legs. That's a distraction. That's her distracting from her father getting upset. And full of big dangers. I'd prefer you stay at home with me. There's plenty to do at the camp. In your dreams, Mum. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're all getting ill badly, aren't they? Okay. We have some axes. We have some bags. We're good to cut trees in the forest from now on. Probably should. I'll let you take care of that. I don't have the muscle for it. You can help too, Moira. You must strengthen your body. You're too weak. Oh god, they're all gonna get in bad moods of each other soon. I'm the sister who's got the mind and you've got the muscle. Yep. And I've got both. Aha, you sure do, child. Oh, not entirely about it. Cutting trees is tiresome, but holding them back to camp even more so. Anyone can help, but don't overdo it if you're too tired. You'll just end up hurting yourself. I just want to remind everyone that wood is our main resource and crafting, for both for crafting and for keeping our fire. So we shouldn't overlook keeping a steady supply of wood. So, built camp 2 of 14, share the water. Every night, the characters most likely the characters are most likely to be dehydrated. The more potable water you give them, the more likely they will rehydrate and get up for a piss in the middle of the night. Staying dehydrated means penalties, and the dehydration will worsen after the next day. If they reach dehydrated 4 and are still not rehydrated that night, they will die. Drag and drop the allocated ration to each of them and finally click the next button. So we have two. And four people. Keeping it... Keeping it light for now. Because it's the first night and we do need to make this water last and someone will have to go fetch it the next day. I've shared the water, I've clicked the next button, now let's share the food! We do not have much food. They also need to split whatever edible stuff they have. Different foods have different effects. Most of the food is perishable, so a good part of it will rot before the end of the night, unless they can get loads and loads and loads of salt. They might be better off getting the most value out of it right now. Drag and drop food on each of them until satisfied and proceed to the end of the night by clicking on the next button. Now, fish can go rotten quickly. Uh, 20 to 50% chance to start to turn rotten during each night. Well, okay. Okay, so two for everyone. And then the last one either gets left over or goes to one extra person who needs it most. Which should probably be the youngster or the father, to be honest. Oh, hunger. 1%. I mean, 1% isn't much, you know. Let's stick with that. Oh, no, it's perishable. It's got a good chance. Okay. Well, she's still hungry. 
There we go. Oh, 20 sickness? Oh dear god, this is getting bad. Right. Coughing. Oh, that's not good. They do get some nice rest though. And the fire goes down a lot. Okay, today's weather should be sunny. So, during the day, nothing special. During the night... Okay... Well, with that, I believe I'll end the episode. I hope you all enjoyed this one, and you know what? I'll look forward to seeing you all in the next one. I'll say bye-bye for now, and cheerio!